What's up everybody, I'm your host Joseph and welcome to Fictioning Flow. So today I wanna to talk to you about something a little bit different and slightly off topic, and that is science. And I know what you're thinking. What you talking about? What you talking about? What you talking about? What you, what you, what you talking about, bro? But just wait, it is a big deal that science and comics go hand in hand. And it was actually my fifth grade science teacher that got me into comic books in the first place. We've been doing this project on it, different types of adhesives, like tape and glue and other type of things. And so there was a sticker book back in the day, and that's what we were using. And she allowed me to see the sticker book, and I noticed I was really into it. Like I was like taking it away because it was a Marvel sticker book. And all these characters with these beautiful colors just really drew me in. And she made this deal with me that if I would do better in science, like get better grades on my tests and do better in my schoolwork, that she would give me a new comic book. She just saw me really being engrossed in this sticker book. And so I made that deal. And so that's how I started getting into comics. My fifth grade science teacher actually bought me my first comic book. And it was a love relationship ever since. So I've, like I said before, just always interested in science, studying everything from uh, Mendel and the Peapod and looking at genetics and I at one point in time I wanted to be a scientist like really getting into like kind of Professor X and the mutant gene and what that's all about and like natural mutations. So um, both DC and Marvel have put out these books that kind of is a love letter for me to science and comics combined and it's all about anatomy. So my first book I want to show you is the anatomy of a metahuman. So in the DC universe, a person with powers is called a metahuman, not a mutant. So this is the first book. Here you go. It is a beautiful hardcover book. It is gorgeous. It has a descriptive detail about each metahuman and kind of like their power sets, as well as villains. All right, and it's the back jacket really quickly. It is written by S.D. Perry and Matthew K. Manning and illustrated by Ming Doyle. So I really love this book and I highly recommend it for anyone who is interested in the science of superhero or comic characters. All right. So this book is written in the perspective of, as you probably would have guessed, Batman. It's like Batman took his secret files and kind of wrote a description on some of his friends as well as some enemies and kind of like what makes them work how, and trying to figure out everything about them to like their physical base, to their power levels and doing it in a scientific way. He even has an introduction talking about possibilities that he would do to himself to enhance himself to keep him going longer. And he kind of struggles with that throughout the book. It was a really good concept. So he talks about putting in this chip that will kind of help support his spine, which you know was highly damaged when Bane broke his back in that famous Batman issue many years ago. And he kind of goes over slightly like what these modifications would do, how it will work over time. But he also says he's a little adverse to it because he doesn't want to depend on the technology. Like it makes him a slave to that. And he doesn't want that. So of course, the first person that he is looking at is Superman, right? It goes into detail about his abilities as well as his skeletal structure and how he uses his powers. At least theorize how his powers work because Batman doesn't have an exact understanding, but he's like, this is what I believe is going on. So that first section talks a little bit about his Kryptonian structure and how he looks very really similar and have similar biology to human beings. All right? And a lot of people forget that he is an alien because he looks so much like us that he is not a human being, he is an alien. All right. And he talks about, you know, further research to kind of dig deep into what's going on with him, All right? But this in this in-depth x-ray look of Superman, this Venturian man pose is pretty good. This is one of the parts I really love. It's like how they talk about his solar powers, right? How he gains access or gains powers from the sun, like what's going on. And I love in this section how Batman compares it to photosynthesis that happens in plants. So he's basically thinking that Superman is something in his cells that stores the energy from the sun and then turns it into what he can use to make him, you know, this super person. And I, and I love the little side notes in the book because he's also giving you things that he wants to do because he's like, I want to develop this microscope that can study his cells more since he doesn't have that right now. Once again, Batman is always trying to think 10 steps ahead in order to plan for the inevitable right his his demise he wants to make sure he has a backup plan but the book covers everything in superman from his heat vision his ice breath his strength his super speed like all the different abilities and gifts that he has and batman breaks down what he thinks is going on and how it's used 
All right, this is a complete mock-up of like his files. He's been explored in the comics many times before when he has all these contingencies with any member of the Justice League will become evil. So he has all these plans put in place. And like you should only be reading this on my demise. Like, if you're reading this, that means that I am either no longer here or I am, you know, something happened to me where I need you to kind of go over this and be prepared to take down these people. Like I won't go into every single detail, but if you should definitely check this book out if you're interested in the physiology and the anatomy of all superheroes as well as villains. I want to go over one more character in this anatomy of a metahuman, and that is Bane. You know, Batman's big, one of Batman's bigger nemesis that kind of did him the most damage physically. So Bane obviously uses this thing called Venom to kind of enhance himself. He goes over what the Venom does and how it damages the body physically over time. Like how it kind of makes the cells and muscles break down because of the continuous use of it. Like it makes them more weak. One of the things I really enjoy is how Batman kind of questions how is Bane able to endure the changes to his body so much with the Venom over time? because it seems like any other person would break them down. And I like how he kind of guesses that it's possible that the Venom may even awaken a latent metahuman ability. So check out this real quick. Like some of the things he talked about and like how it may work with Bane and the different experiments that he partook in in order to get the perfect reach for the formula. He goes in it to talk about how the increase in muscle mass could also have some critical inherent internal vulnerabilities, making his skeletal structure that much weaker. And that over time, like he won't be able to even function and move really well. And I love these theories that he puts out in this book. So once again, if you're curious about the different anatomy of metahumans, I definitely would suggest and recommend picking up this book. Because like I said, it covers everything from the main characters in the Justice League to like Cheetah, Mr. Freeze, um, Doomsday, Bizarro, all the major players pretty much, and it breaks down their powers, abilities, and their physical structure. So The Anatomy of a Metahuman was the first book that came out like this. But most recently, which was last year, Marvel did one as well. And it is actually two times as bigger as the medical one, and the breakdowns are even more detailed. And I like the way they break it down a lot better in the Marvel version. Let me show you that book right now. This is just called Marvel Anatomy. All right, and as you may have probably figured out, since the first one was done in the voice of Batman, this one is done in the voice of Black Panther. It's like this is the Wakanda Files and a breakdown on all the superheroes and villains that he has gathered over the years and kind of exploring how their anatomy works and kind of talk about what their weaknesses and strengths are and kind of how they generate their powers, all right? So once again, beautiful cover. I love all the detail in this book. Little description on the back from T'Challa. And this one is written by Mark Serac and Daniel Wallace. And it's illustrated by Jonah Loeb. So different authors and illustrators for this book. So what I love about this book is broken down by characters' abilities as well as their classification. So for example, you have people of science, technological marvels, cosmic power, extraterrestrials, mutants, uh, mystical beings, and animal abilities, right? and enhanced species so all these different categories but one of those great details i love about this is that each introduction to the section is represented by like an african mask that kind of resembles some of the characters that it's kind of be talking about in the forward so like i say in that introduction you see that beautiful african design to child black panther mask and he kind of tells you what's going on and what this book is about one of the first species he talks about are the scrolls and they're like the major threat because they have this shape-shifting ability. Not only can they mimic the person, but they can also mimic any powers or abilities that they have, which is of course a huge threat. So I love the detail in the illustrations. They are really elaborate, really vibrant. They, they pop off off the page and they give you this beautiful detail to just go into full design and anatomy of the characters. All right. So let me show you this one first opening picture of the scroll. All right, I love it, love it. All right, these guys were featured first in the Captain Marvel movie, and they've been also featured a couple of times in the WandaVision uh, Disney Plus episode. And we should be seeing more of them in the Secret Invasion Disney Plus series coming soon. So one of the main scrolls I wanna talk about really quickly is the Super Scroll, who's appeared in the Fantastic Four comics. He kinda is able to take on the abilities of all the Fantastic Four at the same time. 
He's also been in several video games, especially in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, one of my favorite characters to use in there. Let me give you this breakdown of they show you his cellular structure and, and how this nucleus and everything in him is able to move. Really detailed. Each new section is adorned with these beautifully drawn out African masks that represent the characters. Like in the section two of Wonders of Science, we have masks that represent Ant-Man, Daredevil, and the Hulk. And I just love how they look. It's like each section is there. Just these pictures alone is one reason to get this book. So in this section, it goes to break down how certain things are used. For example, like Ant-Man himself, um, how he uses the PIM particles to shrink and increase in size and the chemical makeup of what they do when they're being used. Next is the wasp, um, and I definitely have to show you this page. So I love the detail on wasp's wings, how they have this honeycomb structure under magnification, which makes her wings more vulnerable, and how the wings actually come out of her body. Because for a long time, I thought they were always part of her suit, but as you can see here, the wings are actually some kind of pin particles that are used that are attached to her skeletal structure. So it does actually become part of her physical anatomy when she's fighting. And I love how they explain the detail of her wasp sting. In the movies, they make it seem like it's just like a, a weapon that she utilized, but actually she can fire this at any time, whether it's small or on the regular side. So it's like part of her cellular structure that holds these blasts. And I like how they even say, it could be very similar to how like an electric eel holds a charge and able to disperse it whenever it needs to in defense. All right, let's look at another character that was in Ant-Man and Wasp Quantumania, which is Moda. all right? This Big head creature, which I think did not do justice in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. However, he's been a fan favorite in the comic books for many years. A really unique, kind of manacle, um, pretty crazy, but also just been a really uh, integral force who's been done a lot of things, of course, like Captain America, Fantastic Four, and a bunch of other, the Avengers, a lot of people. All right, so I look, like how they kind of break down his skeletal structure. You can see the inner workings and how huge and massive his brain is and how his physical head can't support the weight of his body. It has to use technology in order to move around. But I really love the detail. I'm talking about how his nervous system is very similar to a circuit board. And that maybe helps with his abilities to be able to think and move things at such fast speeds. Mordor also has psychic abilities, which they've never really explored in the movie, which has always been a part of the comic books. And it's possible because of the way his neurons and synapses fire so fast, he's able to generate a small psychic force. Usually this gem in the middle of his head, his band enhances that. And that's why he's able to use it to like shoot beams or move things around with his mind. We next move to our cosmic people. And let me just show you the mass breakup of the cosmic people kind of representing the Fantastic Four. And jumping to one of the main characters I was always curious about as far as his anatomy is concerned is the thing, right? We have this rock-like creature. It's like, how does he function? How does he move when everything's supposed to be rock? But this book kind of reveals under the rock, there is a muscle segment. Like it's not just rock, solid rock all the way through, all right? It's kind of saying that these plates kind of interlock and they move and shift kind of like it is when an earthquake is happening, right? These tectonic plates are moving around. And that's kind of what's happening in the thing's body. And I love how they also show like very, if you look very closely, there seems to be this growth in between them that kind of affects that process as well. So once again, really good examples of science and comics and anatomy. Uh, but one of the things that I did not know until I read this book was like looking at his hands, because if you notice, the thing only has four fingers. So like he's missing one of his fingers. Look at this book. You can see the details of how it actually works. So his ring finger and pinky finger have actually fused together. And it's the reason why he only looks like he has four fingers. But in actuality, he has all five. And I have to bring you all the Mad Titan. I couldn't get anywhere in this book without showing you him. So this is the mass design, the African mass design of Thanos. And as you can see, this fully, like, almost surreal breakdown that Black Panther gives us Thanos' uh, muscular system and nervous system, and he even theorizes that he's more powerful than the Hulk. It's similar to the Hulk's physical structure, but it's even more powerful since Thanos is also a deviant, which is a deviation of the Eternals, which are kind of like gods, right? So there you have it, like a breakdown of the Mad Titan himself. 
And this also probably explains why he can kind of hold on to the Infinity Gems without them like affecting him like it does anyone else. And last but not least, we couldn't get through this section without T'Challa talking about his ex-wife Storm of the X-Men, right? And he goes into a highly detailed description of how her powers work, about how she's able to move and conduct electricity and have weather manipulation. It's still slightly not understood exactly how her mutation works, but especially the ability to fly, how she moves wind around her in order to be able to fly and lift and, and use almost the same thrust and yield of a airplane. And I love this section, how he kind of talks in detail about the, how she's generating electricity, kind of like how all human beings have an electrical charge, but that hers can be even greater since um, due to her mutation and the electrical powers that she's able to hold on and store and how her abilities can supercharge the air to generate that lightning. So it's comparable to the lightning that comes from Thor. And, and several times it's happened in the comic book, Storm has been able to lift Thor's hammer and utilize that same electricity because of the mutation and kinship in her abilities. All right, so there you have it. The anatomy of a metahuman as well as the Marvel anatomy. These are two highly recommended books if you are interested in the science of comic book characters. I will put a link in the description to both of these books so you can purchase them online for yourself. All right, if you've enjoyed this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to know when new videos drop just like this. And leave me a comment below let me know what you think. Did I hit the mark? Is this something that's worthwhile to you? Are you interested in learning about the anatomy of superheroes and villains? All right, and until next time, peace. What's up, what's up? We are talking about fiction in What's up? If you don't have it, you are truly missing. Fiction in What's up? We are talking about fiction in What's up? If you don't have it, you are truly missing. Fiction in What's up? If you don't have it, you are truly missing. Fiction in